All right, welcome. This is December 18th. This is the Mycroft DevSync. And uh, I'll start off by saying that, yes, we know that there's a problem with Selini. Uh, we're fixing it right now. Uh, obviously, this message is way too late for you. Um, but uh, that explains why Chris may or may not be fully in attendance for the rest of this call. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with um, Josh, the first name I saw on the list. Um, I submitted all this stuff for the update. Uh, uh, all the firmware update stuff has been submitted and the purchase re pull request is done. Um, and the investor update it didn't go out yesterday, but it's, it's, I need to look at one more thing and then it goes out. So that's, that's really the two big things. And then we talked a little bit about the lawsuit and I found an artist for the, for the, uh, I found and selected an artist for the children's book. Yay. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, yeah, we'll look forward to sharing more about that with the community soon. Um, and uh, Gez. Uh, hey, um, I did some, uh, mostly did Wi-Fi stuff yesterday, actually. So we're designing some, um, well, pulling the screens that used to exist. Um, the previously, the sorry, I haven't had a lot of sleep as well. Um, <laughs> the the Wi-Fi setup screens used to be static images. Um, and so they were portrait mode because that's the, the original orientation. Um, so I've been um, porting those over to uh, QML, QT, and, and making them um, dynamically created in code so that, you know, rather than just using it one static image, um, so it will work on any future device as well. Um, the side product of that is that our um, connected screen was like, you know, a giant green, uh, green screen with a big tick and, and the word connected underneath it. Um, and that is now uh, generic enough that we can use it as like a, a status screen for, for any number of things. So, you know, change the background to red, change the icon to an X, you've got an error screen, you know, add an eye, add, add a eye in a circle and change it to blue, you've got an info screen, like all that sort of stuff. Okay. And well, yeah, you dropped out there for a minute. Oh. <laughs> right after you said something about info screens. So. Uh, don't worry. It's just uh, nice, nice to do div uh, visual development every now and again. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the Selene stuff, I'll, I'll let Chris talk through. Um, I think the Wi Fi screens is, is the main thing. Oh, the Panticore image obviously is, is going well. We all just came from a meeting from that. Um, so uh, we've got another meeting on Monday um, to look at that. Um, and I'm going to take a couple of days off next week, um, which kind of means that I won't be around the whole week because of how America, Australia time zone works. Um, uh, but Ken and Derek will be available for Panacor and, um, and if people can just keep an eye on the, the chat and stuff in case there's any more uh, issues that would be useful, but um, hopefully we get all this fixed up today and we'll go into Christmas with a nice working system. Yeah, uh, so not to uh, underplay where we are with the Panticore stuff, but my understanding is that uh, everything is working. If we hadn't worked up Selini, then we would have been doing a demo today. Is that right? Okay. That that is, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, there's obviously still tweaks and stuff, but the, you know, um, they worked with Ken a lot in particular and, and got all the hardware working and um, audio in and out and, uh, and um, uh, theoretically all the, the button stuff should work. They, they didn't have the device there with them to, to check, but um, uh, yeah, it, it seems like all good. So there's lots of tweaks that we still need to do and then, sure. and then look at, yeah. But then that'll but, um, so once this is up and running, it's all you know user experience improvements and, and things like that. Well, for the main part. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, so okay, not to uh, 
and delay this any further, let's go to Chris and see what's going on with Cellini. Um, I'm having a bad day. Um, <laughs> so last night I uh, deployed all the changes I made to Cellini. It was a uh, a very large uh, update to Cellini. There's a lot of stuff going on. We upgraded to Angular 10, um, which meant upgrading some of the code in, in Cellini UI, um, lots of wake word stuff, and lots of new database stuff to support Tagger. So there was a lot in there. Um, and I went to bed around 2 AM thinking everything was fine <laughs> um, after running some tests and uh, woke up this morning and, and found out they weren't. So um, the, <clears throat> there was initially an issue with adding, um, with adding a device with the pairing code. Um, that issue is resolved. Um, it was an issue with, uh, with wake words indirectly. And I don't know if we want to talk about this right now or not, but the, there's a subselect that um, picked the wake word um, from the table so we can put a reference on the device table. Um, that subselect was returning multiple rows because there's a Hey Mycroft um, Pocket Sphinx and a Hey Mycroft Precise. Um, I think in the last iteration, there was just a Hey Mycroft Precise, so that returned one row and everything was fine. Um, so the regression test didn't catch it because there is no regression test for multiple wake words being returned in that subselect. <laughs> um, but the regression test did, did pass. Uh, so my hack was to make sure that that subselect in SQL, I just did some hard coding to make sure that subselect would, would return one row all the time. And that's why pairing works now. Um, but I did want to have a discussion. Um, maybe after this or, or something about what the longer term solution is to that. Because I think um, you could certainly have an issue where, you know, we support multiple wake word engines. And I think you'd, you'd, there's certainly a, a viable thing that you could have multiple, um, the same wake word with multiple engines. And that right now we couldn't handle that the way um, the code is written. We've been lucky so far that it hasn't been this. Um, so how does that affect uh, pairing? So, so after you pair, then um, all the information you enter on the pairing screen, one of which is the wake word, um, gets um, populated on the device. Um, so, um, so I was trying to insert the device table. Um, basically, I'm adding a row to the device table when I do a pair, and the device table has a reference to the what, what wake word it's using. Um, okay, which is how that. Gotcha. So that was failing. Um, so then there were, a, uh, I saw a bunch of um, just trying to use login and use the the interface, uh, the web interface for logging in and doing account management stuff. Yeah, logging in is fixed. Um, that was um, that was a typo. <laughs> um, basically, I had there's a GitHub and a and a Facebook um, key we use to do to do those logins with them, and they were inversed. So I unendorsed them and everything worked fine. Um, okay. That one took a while to find. That was kind of obscure. Uh, but that is fixed now, already in production. And I just, the compile for the add device where you hit add device and you don't even get a screen, that is now fixed as well. Um, that build just finished. Okay. So that was, a, uh, that was an Angular 10 um, upgrade issue uh, with Vue Child that um, the, the tool I used to upgrade to Angular 10 did not catch. So um, that was just a one line change and that is done. So I think that's everything. Um, I think Gez was gonna run through and try to, you know, with a brand new account, create an account and add a device and make sure everything is, is working now, but I believe I've addressed them all. Okay. Um, so then we need to have a discussion about, um, not here, uh, not now, but, um, you know, what are we going to do about this in the future? You know, wh how do we miss these things for, you know, what can we add to our regression test suite to make sure this stuff doesn't happen again in the future that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and then also, you know, 
Josh requested we take a look at our notification system because as he, I think, rightly pointed out, we don't want to be learning about this from our users. We should be getting, you know, errors and, and, and alerts um, uh, directly from the system somehow if, if things start to fail. So um, we don't have any um, UI tests. I think that's part of the problem right now. So okay. um, well, I might have fixed some of that. Yeah. Then that will definitely be a topic for discussion. All right. So um, yeah. So I, I haven't really worked on the wake word stuff today. I've pretty much spent my day doing bug fixes. Um, so I'll get back to that on Monday. Okay. Yeah. If you could spend just, you know, run through again, you know, I know you've been beating your head against it for, uh, for all of today, but, uh, you know, try to exercise all the paths just in case, uh, for, for logging in and pairing and stuff. Uh, cause you'll know better than anybody, you know, what the different options are, that sort of thing. So. Uh, okay, great. Thanks. Um, I think if everyone if everyone can go in, so everyone uh, could go in, create a new account, and like, or or just pair it, repair a device in your existing account. I think that would also help because, um, you know, I, I know it's it's so easy as the person who designed who has implemented the system and has gone through it many times yourself. You often just like do the exact same thing each time um, because you like it's. It's just how your brain is wired up to work. Um, well, I know so Josh is good, good at breaking good. things, so yeah. Yeah, Josh, go pair a device. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, I don't have a device is my challenge, so that's the challenge. Right, anyway. Well, wait, we can fix Anyone that now, can. though, can't we? I don't oh, know. No, have, well, the Pentacore stuff the... needs a R four device. Uh, yes, no, 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 not, yeah. no, it doesn't. Not to pair. Not to, it doesn't. You don't. You don't need audio to pair. I can send you the link to the Panticore build. I've been testing the Wi-Fi on an R3. You don't. You know, all through pairing and everything. So yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to run the run it on the R3. I've just been waiting to mess with the software until I had a piece of hardware that would work. Yeah. I mean, after pairing, it's not going to do anything. But <laughs> you can at least pair it. Actually, right. well, actually, it does it does do audio output. You just can't talk to it. I'll I'll schedule a post mortem for um, Monday. We can have a more detailed discussion about. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, remediation and stuff. Uh, all right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, uh, Ken, how are you doing? Ken's hurling. Wait, no. No, I'm he's, good. I'm good. He's good. Okay. No, I've got my lap. I reconfigured my office, and my laptop is right in front of my monitor. And until I get it situated, it's cutting off like the centerpiece of the monitor. I'm good. I continue to work on the uh, integration of the new URLs into the existing uh, continuous training process and putting together a schema for that for trial for training runs, so that I know what the counts were the last time I ran and. And I can do my threshold tests based upon that and all that good stuff. Uh, and then I got to the point where I, you know, needed data. So I started stubbing out the back end. And that's where I was at when the shit hit the fan an hour ago. It's kind of helping some customers. Okay. Um, all right. So you're going to be working on that for yeah. the yeah. next little while. All right. Uh, Derek. Hey, all right. So this uh, today I was basically going through our documentation in the bomb and creating um, as much detail as I can for Johnny so that uh, he can uh, inventory all the stuff and kind of understand it all the a little better. So Michael did a great job of setting the standard with the fan spec document. Not everything will be that detailed. But um, we'll be creating a spec document for um, all the parts so that you know you know what they look like and uh, know a little bit more about what can fit or you know more about them than can fit in a spreadsheet. Um, so I began that process and I gave everything part or actual part number for Mycroft now. Um, so I talked to Johnny a little bit about that. So you know, I I'm imagining that's going to happen um, probably. I told him probably January 4th, we'd start getting these things organized and shipped, start, starting to ship to Joe based on timelines, uh, but we should review that. 
Um, and then I was also going back, uh, so I've been talking, I guess, a little bit about the Wi-Fi setup stuff yesterday and uh, updated all that, you know, starting yesterday, updating all the screens, but then today also spent a good amount of time just going through um, all, this, all the mock-up designs in Figma uh, for a lot of the skills and updating them to the horizontal screen and any other changes that have happened in the meantime that would require updates. Uh, so that when you know Pantacore stuff's up and going and we have the time to focus back on skills, we will have um, some of those updates to, to review and, and focus on. Um, I think the big decision out of that is we, we do have to think about, uh, those of you that were on the Pantacore call, there's an opportunity to support both the Wi-Fi setups. And um, if we want to do that, we have to create a design that that kind of prompts the user to select which one they want to use. And Gaz came up with a few ideas on how to do that. Uh, so I think we need to mock that up and, and have a, a look at it to see if we want to support that. Derek, was that the issue? I, I thought the issue was that their process wasn't getting the message bus messages was the only issue. I didn't think there was anything like that. Well, no, this is a, this, this is just something we discussed. Do we want to support um, being able to, to choose between doing the AP mode versus the onboard screen mode? Do you mean for um, a, a particular the, device, right? No, so, no. This well, is well, used no. from no, no, no. the user. What they're getting at is now that they've got the access point networking working, they're like, well, we don't really need the soft keyboard anymore. And I'm like, why? And then somebody no, no. Was saying, well, there might be a need to select one or the other, but, and I haven't tested this build, but I'm assuming the way it would come up, there'd be a Wi-Fi connect on the uh, soft keyboard. And then if I wanted to go to the access point, I could, and maybe it could be the dialogue could even say at that point, if you prefer, you can go to blah to, you know, put in your password or select your network. But other than that, I thought the main issue was simply that they didn't have the messages plugged in. So when you got when you were going through their Wi-Fi setup, you weren't seeing the proper screens. Um, am yeah, I yeah, no, it's it's two two it's two separate things. Yes, yeah. they don't they don't have the prompts. It's kind of on us to do that. The guess is kind of working on that. Um, uh, so that's like the screen is just telling the user what to do, and the audio prompts telling the user, "Hey, this Wi-Fi AP thing is going to be spun up, and you should go look for it." Um, so yeah, all that's going to happen on the screen if if we do the AP route. But they are they are willing to help us build a system uh, that would support both presenting both to the user, and they choose. You know, do they choose to use a soft keyboard to set up, or do they choose to use the AP mode to set up? And so they can support that if we want to do it. So I think the choice well, for us is- That's where you're confusing me though. That's where you confuse me. So first of all, I thought that's already how it's working. And second of all, why would the user have to choose? They, I mean, they wouldn't have to say any choose. We wouldn't have to ask them to choose. They could just either use the keyboard or go to the access point. Why is there a concept of they have to choose? Well, because as it is now, they it'll be very confusing because there's nothing that really tells them, you know, they both have this AP mode being spun up and they, you know, maybe, you know, as it's designed, as we previously designed it, there's all these audio prompts and these screens telling them to go to an access point and connect. Meanwhile, there's also a keyboard showing up on screen. We just have to think about this and, and present it better to the user if we want to give them that choice because, you know, open source and Linux, we like choice, but it can be confusing to have like multiple options being thrown at you at the same yeah, time. Okay. And not knowing yeah. So we it need just, to have a just... good spec on the, on, on the user experience. Well, so I this assume is... that's what Derek is working on or is Gez working on that? It, it's, we should work on it together, but Gez is, is, is off next week. So I guess I'll take okay. a stab at it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the... I, I like having the... technologically both options, but you know, Ken is right. Like. But this needs to be dead simple for the user, and since we have an on-screen keyboard, we should we should use it. Um, you know, I want somebody's grandma who remembers her password to be able to, you know, get this device up and running with no trouble. Um, so, uh, yeah. But there there was something brought up in the Pantacore meeting, which I believe leads 
is an issue that causes the bug that I see that they are dealing with it in a bit more of a direct way than the blue systems guys are dealing with it. Which yeah, and, and they can, but they said they could fix that. They just need to, to right, work with the, right. you know, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you're absolutely right, Derek. What he said was that they go directly to network manager. Blue Systems goes through an intervening layer, and they're not stateful, so they okay. may, well, yeah. But the point is, yeah, Blue Systems are, supposedly has a fix for that bug. Right. right. Okay. So let's, we okay. Still, so the status is it. Derek is going to outline an actual uh, user experience workflow and... We're going to yeah. get on with it. Okay. This yeah, is all, all the the technical. making it an either or decision. I just, you know, to me, it was like, yeah, both. Right. The technical issues seem like they've been resolved. It's just right now, I think it would be confusing for the user as to what to do. Okay. So it's all about props and visuals. All right. So anything. Uh, okay. So that was uh, work on the bomb, the Wi Fi setup, UX. Anything else going on? Uh, we should probably check in next week, early next week, on ordering stuff. Um, I, I would suggest we do that. I'll set something up with, with Chris and Johnny. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay, who haven't I talked to yet? I think I hit everybody. Great. Um, I haven't been around much today. I had a bunch of stuff to do with the kids and doctors. So... Um, nothing really to report on my end still uh work in progress on prototypes of the fans and things like that pcba stuff continues to to move along i'm getting new quotes in every day so um hopefully that will uh, wrap up uh early next week um any any uh, other topics people want to discuss um gaz just fyi when you created the incident report um it wasn't available to the public i just Okay, just flag it, and I just, I just shared it with everybody. So um, it is now out there for the world to see. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Great. Uh, so I think Chris and I are going to have a follow up um, after our next meeting um, about uh, responding to this stuff. Anybody else uh, who wants to jump in on that is welcome to. Um, but uh, for now, uh, I guess that'll be it. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend.